For this tutorial, I'm in the audio workspace. You can reset the workspace by clicking on the panel menu in the workspaces panel. In addition to clip keyframes and level adjustments, you can add keyframes to audio tracks. These combine with clip adjustments to produce a final audio output. I've got a simple sequence here. I'll just zoom out a little so you can see. We have a series of still images. These are all shots of Iceland and some music to accompany them. We want the music to gradually fade up the audio level at the start, but we haven't chosen exactly which track we're going to use yet. In fact, in this project, we have a couple of options. One's already in the sequence. Coincidentally, if you click on the settings menu in the timeline panel, you can enable show audio names and you can see exactly which clip you're working with. I could easily add keyframes to this clip. In fact, if I hold down Control here on Windows or Command on Mac OS, I could, for example, click and click to add a couple of keyframes to the rubber band here, drag the first keyframe down, and now I've got a fade up on the clip. I'm seeing the rubber band because, again, under the Settings menu, I've got Show Audio Keyframes enabled. I'll just undo that with Control or Command Z a couple of times to get rid of those keyframes because we're going to add the keyframes to the track instead. So let's view the track keyframes. Here on my Audio One track, I've got my Show Keyframes menu, and with this menu, I'm going to choose Track Keyframes Volume. Track keyframes work in the same way as clip keyframes, but they're not linked to a particular clip. Audio clips can be moved, retimed, or replaced without impacting track volume adjustments. I'm going to make the same adjustment here. It's quite a long one. I'm going to click with the Control key here on Windows, Command on Mac OS a couple of times to add keyframes and drag that first keyframe down so we have our fade up. It's worth noting while we're looking at the keyframes here that just as you can adjust clip audio effect keyframes on the timeline in this way, you can also adjust track-based effects over time and these are effects that you could add using the Audio Track Mixer. I'll zoom right out here so you can see. I cannot move it. I can't do anything with it at all. You'll also notice that the track-based rubber band for audio keyframing extends beyond the end of the clip. It really is independent of that audio clip. Let's have a quick listen to my fade up. Well, it's just as you would expect. It's the same result as we would achieve making an adjustment with clip keyframes. But watch this. I'm going to go back to the Show Keyframes menu, and I'm going to switch to viewing clip keyframes. Now I can move this clip around and do what I like with it. But you'll notice there's no indication that we have those track keyframes in place. Still, they are in effect. I'm going to select this clip, and I'm going to hit Backspace or Delete to remove it. And I'm going to get my second music clip and drag this down in its place. I'll just press the up arrow key on my keyboard to jump to the beginning of the sequence, and let's have a listen. There's our fade taking effect, because the audio keyframes I've added to the track are still applied regardless of the audio clip we're using. Track-based audio keyframes allow you to produce more advanced audio mixes and combine layers of effects and keyframing adjustments. I'm going to go to the Settings menu here on the Timeline panel and choose Customize Audio Header. And I'm going to take this option, Track Volume, and drag it down to my Audio 1 Track Header and click OK. And now you'll notice we've got a number to indicate an adjustment that's been made to the audio level. Again, I'll press the up arrow to jump to the beginning of the sequence. I'll press play, and let's watch that number change. By adding the track volume control to your audio headers in this way, you do get an indication of adjustments that are being made with track-based keyframes.